Bhavantu Sahaviryam Karavavahe Tejasvina Vadhita Mastuma Vidhishavahe Om Shanti 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 Om Kapila Yanamastas May Magne, Magne, Sankhyakarika We have seen the first sloka which was an introduction for the Sankhyakarika There is uh, suffering everywhere so the suffering can be categorized into three Adhyatmika, Adi, Bhautika, Nadhyavika To get rid of from this suffering one has the inquiry of truth or we can say he is trying to find out the reason of suffering so from that it comes the reality of this creation we once we know the reality of the creation we can make some solution to go beyond this subject. So that is the point here. So there are uh, two types of uh, solutions or remedies for this suffering. One is drishta, whatever we know, is a visible, visible ordinary means. And the other one is non visible, or we can say adrishta. So we don't know from where it comes and where it goes. So drishta and adrishta. For adrishta, which is not seen, the reason is not seen, the effect is also not seen. We have Vedas or the scriptures which say about Adrishtas which is not seen. So that uh, whatever we get from Veda scriptures, we follow that believing it has uh, some truth in that or uh, the rishis who say about that they are all very uh, genuine so we can believe but uh, in some cases it's okay that we, if we want uh, enjoyment as we have here some enjoyment we want further more enjoyments in that case, 
we can follow that. But uh, here we want a permanent solution. So, Atyanta Tova Bhava. Ultimately, we want to go beyond this suffering and remove this suffering. In that case, even the scriptures do not help. Why? Because even the uh, heaven or heavenly enjoyments or whatever we uh, know from the scriptures, they are also uh, not uh, permanent. So therefore, certainly this uh, scriptures also, a, no, it is not uh, helpful for real sadhakas who wants a permanent solution for this. That is the point here, the second sloga trying to say. So second karika, we chanted it. So we can uh, repeat these karikas and uh, do some practice to chant uh, the correctly. So it says, Drishtavad Anushravikaha. So connecting with the first uh, uh, karika, in first uh, karika, the second uh, line, there was one word, drishte sapartha. So connecting with that, drishtavat, drishtavat means like the ordinary means, which are already there. Because from here, from this point, a real mumukthu who wants to uh, get uh, liberated from this uh, samsara. So the, he wants to know something beyond this samsara. So therefore, for him this, whatever the scriptures say, uh, in relation with the, the karmas, actually uh, he is not discussing about the moksha theory, he is discussing about the karma theory. Because in, uh, we have Upanishads, there are also scriptures. They say about the moksha, the beyond this samsara. But here uh, the karika is mentioning the karma, whatever karma or upasana, the means there in the scriptures, they are not sufficient uh, to uh, get rid of this uh, pain. That's all. So, drishtavat, like the ordinary like the first sloga what we know anushravikaha the next word comes as anushravikaha anushravikaha means what has been heard so what has been heard so listen to the scriptures we know from that it is called anushravika so that has been relieved uh, no revealed by uh, scriptures, scriptural knowledge. So that is called Anushravika. So why it is called Anushravika? It is uh, from Guru Parampara we know, the tradition of Gurus. So Guru, Shishya and then after that like that comes. So Guru Shishya Parampara, the tradition of uh, lineage of Guru Shishya. Therefore it is called Anushravika. So Anushravika means scriptural knowledge, we can say that. Sahi Abhishuddhi Chaya Adishayutta. Now he says, what is the what 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 is the problem, what is wrong with the scriptural knowledge? Why it is not sufficient to uh, remove our uh, suffering or the samsara completely? The reason is Sahi Abhishuddhi Chaya Adishaya Yuktaha. So, Sahi means this uh, Vedic uh, knowledge or uh, whatever we get the sadhanas or karmas from this Vedic knowledge, the spiritual knowledge. It also has, uh, with uh, it is also has impurity, Abhishuddhi. It is not pure. Pure in the sense when Sankhya say pure, 
this is like no uh, we normally say pure which means clear and shuddha but in the terms of sankhya we always say uh, to see what they say about it now here vishuddhi means it is not purely sattvika it means it is shuddha it is purely sattvika then they say it is shuddha so it is not purely sattvika and all these karmas as some rajasika some tamasika because uh, there uh, in many of the uh, you know that uh, karmas yajnas or sacrifices they have uh, animal sacrifice so it is with animal sacrifices so the jodhishtoma is a famous uh, sacrifice for heaven it has so much of animal sacrifice in that so it is not uh, shuddha because sacrifices is there then it is himsa he is hurting some uh, uh, no beings like that right? so it, it is not ahimsa therefore it is impure in this sense so uh, then what would be the uh, fruit of that the effect of that it will have some impurity and some tamasika tamasika effect therefore it, it is not meant for shuddha sattvika and it is not meant for knowledge according to sankhya uh, to get knowledge one should be pure sattvika because sattva is connected to knowledge we will know it further when we read it will come if anything connected to knowledge should be sattvika so therefore they say uh, even though scriptural this karmas are good for who are wants to do that but in this sense for this sadhaka who wants to go beyond this samsara and uh, get liberated kaivalya or moksha so he he cannot do this if he does he will be again in bondage with this impure karmas so therefore avishuddhi that one is avishuddhi is there and second thing chaya and this karma effect also the fruit of karma is also decaying is also decay it is not permanent so whatever karma we do in any level even sattvika rajasika tamasika in any, any type of karma it is not permanent it is always decay in one time it will be destroyed therefore you cannot get a permanent solution or permanent uh, experience with impermanent means this is a theory says so what you get from impermanent impermanent sadhana or uh, means the effect will be impure therefore the second reason is chaya and third reason adishaya yukta excess so whenever we see something uh, beyond us we are not satisfied so if we go to heaven then there are many type of heavens so one experience and another experience and another experience so the adishaya is here comparison is there. the comparison makes mind unsatisfied so mind always goes to the higher of higher of that so we know in our uh, day to day experience so they will never we know something better than what we have so we will go after that and leave the other so when the comparison is there the superlative and then all those other other degrees are there then it cannot be uh, the last one to achieve so therefore adishaya yukta so one who is in the state of indra so the position of indra he achieved the position of indra but uh, when he achieved that he came to know uh, brahaspadi's position is better than indra then brahma's position is even better than that 
So he is always jealousy with that, is not satisfied, and then is gone. So whatever he did, because to achieve the position of Indra, you, you need to do hundred Ashwamethas. And one hundred Ashwamethas. And each one Ashwamedha has at least in one Ashwamedha more than six hundred animals are killed for the sacrifice. So each uh, Ashwamedha for one year. So it means hundred Ashwamedha, uh, you have to live your life for hundred years and then you do all this, uh, spending all this money and effort, and then you go to Indrapada. When you reach there, you see, you know, Indrapada is not the best one. You have another, uh, better uh, no, uh, positions are there. Therefore, it's always Adishayipta. It's a psychological thing that we understand. Whenever we see something better than what we have, we are always after it. So, you don't depend on the scriptural uh, karmas. Now, tad viparitaha shreya. Now, we leave all this drishta and adrishta. What is seen and what is unseen. We are not going after that. We know that these both are not sufficient to complete our inquiry or uh, it is not answer for our inquiry. So, we go further. Then, tad viparitaha shreyan. Tad viparitavan, opposite of this, whatever is said. Tad viparita. Now, now what is the, it should be a pure and uh, uh, not decaying or permanent and without comparison. It should be ultimate, incomparable, uh, uncomparable. So, this is ultimate. Then, tad viparitaha shreyan. Opposite of this is preferable. Shreyan means preferable. It is our object of achievement. Okay. So, now what is this? Then he says, we can categorize this uh, preferable uh, object of our uh, sadhana can be three vekta, avyakta, jna, vijnana. So it can be achieved by knowing vekta. Vekta means manifested. What is manifested? Avyakta, what is not manifested, unmanifested. So manifest and unmanifest and then jna. Jna means knower the consciousness. So, Prakriti in the two form, manifest and unmanifest. And then comes Purusha. So, these three, out of three, first two are two division of Prakriti itself. Manifested Prakriti, unmanifested Prakriti. Okay. Then, Nyaha. Nyaha is Chaitanya. So, knowing of all these three or discriminative knowledge of all these three you can one can achieve the ultimate goal which is permanent Nya, uh, uh, nya is uh, uh, Chaitanya consciousness Vekta is manifested what is seen as creation Avyakta is unmanifest state of the creation so we should know all these three so from this, so Vekta Vyakta Tnya Vijnana. So knowing all these three, one can achieve the ultimate state of consciousness or ultimate state of uh, liberation. Okay. So now here Sankhya is the uh, in this philosophical uh, terms we say. Uh, out of all the philosophical schools, Sankhya is the first one to say only by knowledge you get liberation. So, like Vedanta, Sankhya says by knowledge you can get liberated. The liberation is with the knowledge. So, then uh, 
Advaita also follows that, Vedanta also follows that, other philosophy also follows. But first you want to say this is Sancha. So like, like that Vijnana. So there, there is no uh, karma. Therefore in Sankhya philosophy, you don't find any karma. There is no discussion of karmas. So they leave karma aside and then go after this jnana. And therefore there is no uh, varnashrama, vivastha and all those such, uh, no, discussion of all this are not there. Because that is all meant with the scriptural knowledge of uh, even we can say Mimamsa and all other things. And even yoga philosophy also we don't have all this. Uh, it doesn't mean it is not there. It is there because they have taken uh, granted it. So whatever is there, they took it and then from there they discuss. Because who is ready to study Sankhya and yoga philosophy? They are not asking for uh, uh, from which varna or which uh, ashrama and uh, what I, uh, uh, should I do and all these these questions are not there after these questions this comes because uh, already in the first shloka we know he is not interested in all this bhavahara all this uh, empirical whatever we say about he is not interested he wants to go beyond that Therefore, there is no division, no caste division, no varna division, no uh, sex division, uh, nothing, nothing, you cannot find anything in this karika or even in uh, uh, sutra. Sutras, of course, in the fourth chapter, uh, some discussions are there in Sangha Sutra. But in Yoga Sutra, no, nothing is, you cannot see anything like that. Because they clearly say only knowledge can liberate with the discriminative knowledge. So this uh, discrimination uh, of this Prakriti and Purusha, ultimately two, because Vekta Vyasta is Prakriti only, manifested and manifest Prakriti. So the Prakriti and Purusha, the discriminative knowledge of Prakriti and Purusha. Now how can we get the discriminative knowledge with our mind? How we train this mind to get this ultimate discriminative knowledge, which they say ultra di discriminative knowledge. So it is a very, very fine, very uh, subtle of uh, knowledge type. For that, we have to practice all these meditation techniques prescribed in uh, Yoga Sutras. So for that Yoga Sutra works, because you must have a very fine sharp mind to discriminate the consciousness and unconsciousness. So the Prakriti and Purusha. So the, that clarity comes after uh, a long practice of concentration and long practice of all other sadhanas. Then after Asampratnyana Samadhi, you get that uh, Ridambara Pratnya named as Rudhamparal Pratnya. So it has a special uh, type of state of mind or state of uh, chitta which can discriminate, discriminate, uh, can discriminate this uh, subtlest form of prakriti and Purusha. That we know the, how it goes like that. So this is what the uh, second Karika says. Now second Karika introduced what is the means prescribed or suggested by Sankhya for the moksha? That is uh, indicated here. Tad viparitaha shreya vyakta vyakta nyavidhyana. Here from when you say first sloka and second sloka, half of the sloka, it is mentioning or indicating vairagya. But when, when Vairagya comes from Drishta and Adrishta, what is seen and what is unseen, you don't want to uh, get any of those, those, then you are beyond that, that is called Vairagya. So you are not interested in that. So Tad Viparita Shreyan Vekta Vyakta Vijnana. Now, from here, systematically it follows. So what the second uh, Kariga said, Vekta Vyakta Jnana. 
Now, the Kariga will continue to describe the what is Vekta, what is Abhyakta, what is Vnya. Uh, to take that point, the third Kariga is giving manifest, unmanifest, knower, distinguished form of, uh, yeah, you can say that uh, uh, enumeration of all the 25 tattvas, principles. So 25 principles of Sankhya is described in this third sloka. And this sloka is quoted many, uh, by many scriptural and all the stikas and uh, like that. And Shankaracharya also quote this karika in this fashion. Yeah. By the way, in the in the karikas, uh, like uh, yesterday we were discussing, there is uh, there are two more commentaries on karikas. One is named after Shankaracharya also. This it is not very famous. Jayamangala. It's a Sanskrit commentary named after Shankaracharya. And one another commentary is there in uh, Sanskrit, Yukti Dibhiga. This is also not very famous, but it is there. So, that we further study after uh, getting uh, the general knowledge of Sankhya philosophy by this Karikas. Then, if anybody interested and wants to study more, then they can study all this uh, now, Gaudapada Bhashya and uh, Mathara Vritti or uh, Sankhya Tattva Kaumuti and this Yukti Dibhika or whatever. If they want to study, they will get more clarity in this. So, we will uh, chant third Karika. Mula Prakriti Ravikritir Mahadatya Prakriti Vikrita Yasapta Shodashagastu Vikara na Prakritir na Vikriti Purushaha Shodashagastu Vikara na Prakriti na Vikriti Purushaha Mula Prakriti hi The first uh, unmanifest state of material cause. It is called Mula Prakriti. Mula Prakriti can be translated as ultimate principal material cause. Ultimate principal material cause is called Mula Prakriti. The Mula Prakriti hi Abhikriti hi. It, Abhikriti, Vikriti means evolute, Abhikriti means non evolute. Something fundamental and permanent. So Mula Prakriti hi Abhikriti. We, we, why it is called Mula Prakriti? The Mula means as we say karana karana and mula are the same meaning mula means cause ultimate cause karana means also, also cause but when we say mula prakriti mula and prakriti both it means this uh, particular material cause has no cause it means this is causeless causeless cause Therefore, it is called Mula Prakriti. Because we have so many other causes, material causes. Like we have uh, uh, Mula Prakriti, Mahatattva, uh, uh, Hankara, these are all causes. Panja Bhudas, the five elements, they are all causes. But they have cause uh, no, behind them. So they are from they are also a product. But this Mula Prakriti has no cause. Therefore, it is called Mula Prakriti. There is a sutra in uh, Sankhya 
Mule Mula Bhava Namulam Mulam. They say this is why it is called Mula. Mule Mula Bhava Damulam Mulam. They are saying Sangya Sutra. He is de defining what is Mula. So one Sangya Sutra 167. So Mule, Mule means ultimate cause. Mula Bhava. So because Mule, the ultimate cause has no cause. So Mule, Mula Bhava. Then what it say? Amulam. It is causeless. So it is Mulam. <laughs> so it is ultimate cause. <laughs> you see, that is why how these Sutrakaras, no, they have a very different type of mind. How they thought about it and with the uh, grammar, Vyakarana, clearly and uh, how they made uh, in a single sentence. Mule, Mula, Bhava, Damula, Mula. So beautifully done. Therefore, it is Mula Prakrit. So you don't think beyond that. Because when we think about cause and effect, so the effect has cause, again the cause is also effect, then it has another cause, then another cause. So it goes on thinking like that, cause and cause and effect and effect. So it, it, has, it cannot be stopped. Therefore, we have to stop in one place. So that is called Mula Prakriti. So beyond that, you don't think about what is the cause of the Prakriti. Now you cannot ask. So he made this sutra. So Mule Mula Bhava, the Mula Mula. So, so Mula Prakriti, he, Avikriti, he. he. The Mula Prakriti is a fundamental cause. That we can say material, fundamental, material, ultimate, principal, material cause. Okay? Then from that, Mahanatyaha Prakriti Vikrutayaha Sapta. From that, seven. Prakriti and Vikriti comes. Evalent and its effects. So Mahadadya, so Mahad, Ahankara and five elements, five elements Tanmatras. So it is seven. Mahad Tattva, Ahankara, we will know what is the Mahad Tattva and all those we will discuss later. And Ahankara and five uh, subtle elements, Tanmatras. That is called Prakriti Vikrtaya Sapta. So Prakriti means they are cause as well as effect. Both are. They have both the characters. So Prakriti plus Vikriti. So they, they are Prakriti to some other effects and they, they sell Vikriti. So Mahat is the Vikriti of Mula Prakriti. So the Mahat Tattva is an effect of the principle uh, ultimate cause as present. So therefore, there is Vikriti. And from Mahatattva, Ahangara comes. So Mahatattva is also a cause towards Ahangara. So like that. Then, Shodashagastu Vikaraha. After that, 16 Vikaras. They are only effects. They are not caused to any, anything. So only effects is called Vikara. Only effects. Evolutes. So mere evolutes. So Shodakashagas to Vikara. What are they? Five Jnanendriyas. Five sense organs. And five Karmendriyas. The or, or, organ of action. Five organ of actions. And then mind. Then five elements which we see the product, product tax uh, elements, objects, five objects. So uh, here comes 17, 16, yeah. 16 vikaras. And this, uh, this is the all uh, what we have is now prakriti. It's all called prakriti. First mula prakriti. Then 7 Prakriti Vikriti and 16 Vikaras. So now we got 24. After that, Na Prakriti Hi, Na Vikriti Hi Purushaha. So the Purusha is consciousness, is not cause or not effect. 
so not prakriti or vikriti is called purusha what does it mean consciousness is not cause towards anything and consciousness itself is not effect from anything so that effect and cause relation is there only in the prakriti so all prakriti karya the manifestation of prakriti is called cause and effect in consciousness there is no cause and effect here it is not connected to that this is the special theory of consciousness that is sankhya theory now in vedanta we took this uh, uh, theory special theory of consciousness because they discriminated consciousness very well very clearly this is consciousness and this is prakriti so we took from that in one place uh, shankaracharya ji himself says so why we study samkhya he says in uh, gita bhashya because they clearly discriminate prakriti and purusha he says that asango hyaya purusha because this consciousness has no connection with the prakriti that is what sankhya says this is in sankhya but what we do in vedanta we make this consciousness the pure consciousness or uh, we can say yeah pure purest consciousness uh, without manifestation we make it uh, qualified consciousness we we dilute something there then we make the consciousness as cause of everything so we do some dilution so this uh, uh, qualified consciousness is called ishvara in vedanta so they don't have ishvara because they have, they will not qualify consciousness in any sense they clearly say in many karikas many sutras yeah the consciousness cannot be qualified so if we qualify consciousness then ishvara comes because ishvara has to do something ishvara is a doer the creator if ishvara wants creates it needs some support of maya or some shakti or something should some action should be there and this consciousness is actionless this consciousness not cannot create anything nothing is there it means it's it's a, it's a state of uh, stillness peace or whatever we can say bliss uh, they don't say even with bliss sangya say no consciousness has no bliss because bliss is also a uh, a, a manifestation of sattva guna of prakriti therefore consciousness is without all this ananda is also not there in consciousness according to sankhya it means it cannot be qualified we can only say chit what is chit he says chiteva chit chiteva chit there is a sutra like that chit chit hi the only chit you don't say chit sat ananda and all those no ananda is also not there only chit so that is na prakriti na vikriti purusha so they have so many sutras for this uh, uh, purusha for uh, defining de- purusha what is purusha so they say uh, you don't have you don't have to know purusha you have to know what is prakriti when you know prakriti correctly completely in depth then your work is over because you discriminated prakriti from purusha so what is not purusha you know it but what is purusha you will not not know it that is what this say so you cannot know what is purusha what is uh, consciousness if you say i know consciousness then prakriti comes comes there because this knowing process itself is prakriti is a is a function of sattva guna therefore You, you cannot say that i know chaitanya i know purusha i have uh, this knowledge that knowledge no if you have any type of knowledge this is sattva 
therefore they say even this uh, uh, ultra discriminative knowledge the finest discriminative knowledge is the best discriminative knowledge of this uh, what we say as uh, ajnana that is also a uh, prakriti uh, prakriti that is also a pra- function of sattva guna it is not uh, actionless so this knowledge also has some action so here we vedanta and uh, sankhya and yoga differ vedanta says there is jnanam jnanam has no action no activity here in sattva even the sattva is prakriti the prakriti is connected to uh, all these trigunas so even the sattva guna in that subtlest form has some something some function some uh, activity although say they say if the sattva is connected to raja then only activity is there but even when we experience knowledge knowledge as uh, any type of vijnanam jnanam they have some some action of prakriti because it is prakriti uh, that we will have more discussion on that so na prakriti na vikriti hi purushah so now uh, the definition of prakriti they have given is sattva rajasam samya avastha prakriti so yesterday also i quoted this sutra the definition of prakriti sattva rajasam samya avastha prakriti the equilibrium of sattva rajas tama is called prakriti the equilibrium state of sattva rajas tamas is called prakriti that is the definition of prakriti <coughs> now now we came to know all these 25 principles or 25 tattvas of sankhya with uh, this tattva sankhya is famous for enum- uh, enumerating all this uh, knowledge based on this 25 so they connect with the prakriti and purusha and all those things so now the source of knowledge now we have to know uh, what is uh, manifested what is unmanifested and who is the knower the character the nature of knower we should get a distinguish uh, yeah you no know, discriminative knowledge for this so then we need some means for knowledge the sources of knowledge or by what we can say some instrument for knowledge so with that we can get the correct knowledge and then we can distinguish all all these three when we get high vandya okay so they say only with the, uh, this knowledge of uh, discrimination you will get kaivalya Uh, after this discriminative knowledge there is nothing so if the discriminative knowledge is completed and it, if it is everlasting it means it is continuing then you are in kaivalya avastha so when body is there you are a jivan mukta and after the body you will get videha mukta that is what sankhya says so other than discriminative knowledge like in uh, unlike uh, in vedanta vedanta we say we should have aham brahmasmi and the uh, uh, all pervading brahma and all those stones they don't have all these things they don't see that once you get discriminative knowledge as i said correctly what is prakriti not what is purusha because purusha has no characteristics which can be known so if you go after purusha you will not get anything so no prakriti because prakriti has all the objects and characters so no prakriti then what is not prakriti that is purusha that will be as a experience you will experience the purusha what you your experience would be asango hi ayam atma that would be your experience that in the maybe 62 or 61 62 uh, karika it will be described in the last form 
So you are, you know that I was not in bondage. I have no bondage. I was always free, and I was worrying unnecessarily worrying about all these things. So then, at last, you will get to that state of knowledge. This is the discriminative knowledge is ultimate here. For that, we need uh, some means, some sadhana to uh, know that, to pursue that, to know how we can get into that. The sources of knowledge is illuminated in fourth sloka. Drishtam anumanam aptavajanam cha Sarva Pramana Siddhatva Sarva Pramana Siddhatva Trividham Pramana Mishtam Rameya Siddhi Pramana We have three means of knowledge. In Yoga Sutra also it comes Pratyakshanvana Agamaha Pramanani. That is one sutra. A similar thing because Yoga Sutra also follows this side of the So Pratyaksham is called Drishtam. Drishtam Anumanam Aptavacha. So Drishtam which is seen. The word meaning of Drishtam is seen what is perceived so perceived by sense organs by pancha indriyas by five sense organs what we perceive what we uh, know that is called drishtam pratyaksha which is a valid proof or valid knowledge of our own experience so what we see, what we experience through our sense organs, we consider those as correct knowledge, that is valid knowledge. So pramana means valid knowledge. So drishtam, that is one pratyaksha we know, anumanam inference. So based on pratyaksha, with uh, some connection, some link, we do, in, uh, we uh, infer the object which we cannot see directly to what is unseen or beyond our perception, we infer it. And for that inference, we need some support of, uh, uh, some sort of support from Pratyaksha also. Because without that, you cannot do any inference. So that is also there. But the speciality of inference is, which is not seen can be known. That is the speciality of it. Because the pratyaksha which can be uh, objectified by uh, sense organs, you objectify that, you know that directly. But it is, the, uh, in the anumana, in the inference, we don't objectify it directly, but we know it. So without objectifying what we know with the support of some uh, sensible knowledge, yeah, that is called Anumana. Apta Vachanam. Apta Vachanam. Apta means trustworthy person. Apta. Or what is trustworthy? So we believe in that words of Guru or Shastra, that is called Apta. So, Aptasya Vachanam, Apta Vachanam. So, testimony, it is called as testimony. What is we, what we uh, hear from uh, scriptures or gurus or all that, that is called Apta Vachanam. The statement of trustworthy person or scriptures, the statement of that. And here what it is, we cannot connect with the pratyaksha here. 
sometimes what is there in the scriptures are not seen or we cannot say it is not seen at all it is completely unseen and unexperienced but we believe in that and we follow that after maybe sometimes after a, a long uh, pursuit we may get some idea of that and we have we may have some experience of that that is different story but in the beginning there is no trace it is true or untrue but we believe and follow in that uh, state that state of knowledge is called apta vachana but now the question comes who can be apta so who can be trustworthy trustworthy uh, we have to find no person who is trustworthy you cannot just uh, trust anybody like that so here uh, some uh, some other uh, scriptures give the definition of this apta who can be trustworthy you want not you can not i will just chant the shloka agamo hyakta vachanam aptam doshakthaya viduh kshina dosho anardam vakyam na bruyat asambhavat क्षीणदोषो अनृतम वाक्यम न ब्रूया हेतु संभव सो नई वाट इज आगम आगम इज आप्त वचन दप्त वचन इज कॉल आगम आगम इन टू वर्ड्स सो वन फ्रम स्क्रिप्चर्स वाट वी गॉट फ्रम स्क्रिप्चर्स इट इज कॉल आगम आगम विच केम टू अस द वर्ड मीनिंग ऑफ आगम विच केम टू अस थ्रू ट्रडिशन the scriptural knowledge also we get from tradition and the second one from gurus the apta vakya from shishtas gurus so we have agama of two kinds and here like yesterday i mentioned we have three kinds of agamas shaiva agamas shakteya agamas and vaishnava agamas this is called agamas It is little different from Vedas. Who are experienced Vedas? So whatever said in the Vedas, they describe it to their uh, students, their people. That is Agamas. So Agama and Apta Vachanam. The Apta Vachanam and Agama is both are the same. They Apta ham dosha chaya vidu. Why a person or a scripture is agama or apta because it is without any dosha without any uh, what is a uh, impurities or uh, doshas what uh, it can be any any other type of dosha so dosha chaya so there is no impurity in that the statement as full uh, truth complete truth because there is no impurities there is no doshas why because they experienced they did sadhana and they experienced then they uh, with their uh, kindness their uh, uh, kindness towards the people they just give the knowledge the kind knowledge therefore it has no doshas no impurity क्षीणदोषो हि अनृतम वाक्यम न ब्रूया देन इट सेज हु इज बियॉन्ड ऑल दिस इंप्युरिटीज द वर्ल्डली इंप्युरिटीज ही कैन नॉट से अनट्रूथ ही विल ओनली से ट्रूथ तो अनृतम वाक्यम क्षीणदोषो न ब्रूया बिकॉज देयर इज नो नीड व्हाई वी से लाइक why we say untruth because we have some worldly uh, uh, you know we have we want some worldly uh, achievements or especially we want to protect our ego the first thing why we say lie you know we want to protect our ego our our personality see if some we say lie then we think that we can protect ourselves if we say truth sometimes 
we have a disrespect or you know, that type of something, some problems. So there we don't want, we want to avoid that. So these things are there, not there in that person, Akta, because he is beyond all this. He will not say untrue. He will not cheat anybody. He will be direct. Dosha, chayad, vakyam, nabruya. Why? Hetva sambhava. Because of ignorance, people say lie. Because of ignorance, they have ego. And because of ego, they want to protect their, uh, what do you say, this uh, personality. And then they say all, they make all these problems and lies and things like that. So he has no hetu because he's, he has no uh, ignorance. Ignorance makes all this. So therefore, this Akta can be trustworthy for all. Is very clear. Now, another one stanza says, Swakarmanya Vyukto Yaha Sangadosha Vivarjitaha Pujitas Tadvidhair Nityam Apto Nyayas Sadadrishaha. Now, another point is very, is very good here, it's mentioned. When you see an Apta, you should see how his behavior is. What is his acharana? How he leads his life? That is also important. He is only preaching and teaching others, but he is doing all unnecessary <laughs> things. So then he cannot be an apta. So then he says, Swakarmanya Abhyuktaha. One should be uh, doing and uh, practicing his own duties, Swakarmas. So here comes the ashrama karmas. If you are in a uh, particular ashrama, brahmacharya, grahastha, or vanaprastha, sanyasa, you should practice your own duties. So then only you can teach others. If you are not practicing your own duties and you are only teaching and preaching, then doesn't mean anything. So swakarma abhyuktaha. You have to see if he is practicing or not. So swakarma abhyuktaha. And yaha sangha dosha vivarjitaha. And he should be uh, pure in the sense his uh, company should be pure. The sangha. So he, if he is uh, uh, companying with other uh, uh, people, then there is a chance that he is also getting into that. So sangha dosha vivarjitaha. Sangha means. Uh, company with others. So, Sangha Dosha Vivarjita. And like that, then he has no Raga and Dvesha, no attachment, he detached to all those things, and no jealousy or that type of uh, um, uh, impurities in the mind. So, Sangha Dosha Vivarjita. And Pujita Stadvidhaihi Nityam. And when then we have to see. He is, if he is respected by the respected persons. Pujitaha Tadvithai. The learned people should respect him. It means he, they are also uh, seeing that he is a very good, genuine person. So the uh, learned people, the good people of the uh, no, society should respect this person. It means he is good. So, Pujita Stadvidhai Nityam Satnyayo Tadrishaha. So, this type of person is called Apta. So, this it is describing who can be Apta. And now he can be a guru, he can teach others and the people can follow his words, statements. So, he, is, he can be a trustworthy person. So, this way uh, we have uh, completed the drishtam anumanam aptavajanam cha. Then the other uh, part we will see next. Om Purnamataha Purnamitam Purnat Purnamudasyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shah
शांति 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 कुरुवरादित्य